Attention, attention everybody, this is world genius scientist Dr. Vegapunk. I'm sure this message will come as a shock to you all, but please bear with me. What I am about to tell you is the truth about our world. And that truth, well, the truth is that for as little as the click of a button, you can be subscribed to this channel, which will make your world a much better, much brighter, much funner place because your world will be filled with One Piece discussions which I know you love. So please, why don't you fulfill Vegapunk's dying wish and join our joy fleet? <laughs> Okay, sales pitch over, let's get down to business. Because this is actually a very serious affair. After being one of the most eagerly anticipated characters for over a decade, it seems that our time with the old man Apple Gramps may be coming to an end. And it's fair to say that Vegapunk was marked with a death flag from the beginning of the Egghead Island arc, but it seems like that time has actually come. I mean, Oda is well known to pull off crazy and logic defense scenarios in the past where characters managed to survive situations that should surely be killing them. But even Vegapunk seems to have recognized and accepted his own fate. Which is why the genius scientist has activated his contingency plan. Operation Death broadcast an earth-shattering news to the entire world that will change the history books forever. But what exactly is that big truth? Well, that's what we're here to figure out. So we're gonna jump right into it. First one on my list is that Vegapunk wants to share the good news of our lord and savior, Sun God Nika. Recognizing Luffy as Sun God Nika is a theme that has been present all throughout the Egghead Island arc. Vegapunk first commented on it during Luffy's fight with Luchi when Luffy used his Gear 5th, not entirely convinced yet, but amazed at the possibility of Nika being real and alive. And this knowledge of Sun God Nika is something that we saw more of a context for during Kuma's flashback when discovering Luffy's sun god Nika-esque qualities was something very important for Kuma's last days and his final wishes and something that he explicitly shared with Vegapunk before his ultimate death. And then of course that sweet catharsis where Vegapunk and Bonnie finally realized for themselves that Luffy is indeed the revived sun god. Something that Vegapunk was marveling at very recently realizing that Kuma was right as we saw in chapter 1106. And knowing the history of the sun god and its importance to downtrodden people, especially non-human races like the buccaneers that face discrimination and persecution, as well as the fact that the egghead arc has confirmed what we've suspected about Vegapunk ever since he was first mentioned in the series, which is that despite working for the world government, he only did so seeing the world government as a means to an end. The scientist himself having larger and more idealistic goals and values rather than being truly loyal to the world government. Meaning that Vegapunk is actually a lot more sympathetic to people like Kuma and his pursuit is the pursuit of truth and the world's history and its secrets as well as its potential development and future. Which then in turn means that as someone with such lofty dreams and ideals, I could see Vegapunk's last actions and his last goal to be to still hope in the world. His last message, this great announcement being that the sun god Nika is real and alive, and he's come back to save the world from the tyranny of the world government. I think this sort of news could have massive impact on the world, and also do so much for Vegapunk's character, because this would give him a legendary death that rivals the likes of Roger and Whitebeard. This sort of message would breathe new air and new life into the world, World, filling people's hearts with the same sort of exhilaration that Roger and Whitebeard's news about the One Piece generated. And this is especially relevant because the current world of One Piece is reaching very dystopian, very scary times. This is an aspect that I hadn't really thought about very deeply in the past, but when you consider all the stuff that's been going on in the past two or so years for those living in the world of One Piece, they've witnessed the Paramount War, the un recovery of two great kingdoms being led by two evil megalomaniacs, which resulted in the end of the Shichibukai system, a system that was said to help balance the powers of the world, the death of three Yonko and then the birth of three new ones, former Shichibukai 
now actively on the hunt for marine heads, revolutions occurring in pockets all around the globe. At the last reverie, a meeting that's supposed to be world leaders coming together to bring about order, ending in chaos and tragedy, and then to top that off, an entire island disappearing off the face of the earth. That is some seriously end of the world, Armageddon, we are all going to die kind of crap. I know that the One Piece world lives in different times where there is always conflict. I mean, it's a pirate driven world after all. But the sheer volume and scale of events that have happened in such a short period of time affecting all the different seas, all the different factions, for the average citizen, it must be very unsettling times. So then to hear about a legendary figure of old, a warrior, a savior who has returned, I can't think of anything that would raise people's spirits more. Of course, there is a point to be made that there are a lot of people, or perhaps more accurately, the majority of people wouldn't know who Sun God Nika is at all, and Vegapunk's announcement may even be the first time that people hear about who Sun God Nika is. But I also think that this is the type of news that would spread like wildfire and reinvigorate the population once news got out. So long as there are still only a handful of people aware of the legendary deity figure, this would spread and spread and spread. Hey, did you hear about Sun God Nika? Yeah, but I don't really know who he is. Apparently he's this old god that can bring about laughter and peace and save the world. Just the kind of news that the world government definitely don't want the world to find out. And another reason why I quite like this idea is that it would be a very fitting, a redeeming way for Vegapunk to die. I know I did say not too long ago that Vegapunk is a confirmed good guy and not a world government lackey, but it's still true that he did play a role in Kuma's death, which he obviously still holds a tremendous amount of guilt for, even if others don't blame him. So I think it would be immensely poetic for his last deeds to be something that Kuma would have liked to do. Breathe new hope into people's lives so that they can find a way out of darkness by spreading the good news of the gospel of Nico. But in saying this, I do think that there are two pretty important details that make me question whether the reveal of Sun God Nika is actually Vegapunk's announcement. Firstly, I don't think that he would think that this is a great idea because this may result in an even greater target being placed on Luffy's back. In chapter 1108, we witnessed him entrusting Bonnie under Luffy's care and even even then, Vegapunk was already worried that the reveal of her command over the pacifistas will mean that she will be closely pursued. So surely, the reveal that Luffy is a legendary deity is another sort of thing that would make him a very big target, which Vegapunk wouldn't want if he wants to help protect Bonnie. Unless Vegapunk thinks that this will actually make people more wary of chasing after Bonnie if they know that she's traveling with the Straw Hats, a crew that is not only a Yonko crew, but also has a literal deity figure leading them. But I'm gonna stop that thought train there because we're dangerously close to me saying, but this means Bonnie has to then continue to stick with the Straw Hats to be safe, which raises my hopes yet again about Bonnie being a Nakama, which I feel like at this point we're getting closer and closer to seeing confirmed, but we have been wrong before, and what did I say about stopping me there? So, another, and perhaps more important detail about why this broadcast can't be about Sun God is that Vegapunk's message is obviously pre-recorded and this is just Vegapunk's contingency plan in the event that he dies or is close to death. And given that Vegapunk was stabbed not too long ago, well stabbed twice actually, first by the poisonous spider leg and then a laser beam, but he only recognized Luffy as Sun God Nika only after being stabbed. And I don't think he's had the time or capacity to make this sort of recording since the conflict at Egghead started really heating up, meaning that he didn't know for sure that Nika had been revived to be making this sort of message in advance. Unless there's some other crazy explanation because never say never, especially when it comes to One Piece. But I do have to say in this case, very highly unlikely. So then moving on to the next possible reveal, the birth of the internet. Or I guess in this case, it could be called the Veganet or Punknet or the Vegapunk Network, which would be funnily enough, VPN for short. In chapter 1067, we saw that one of Vegapunk's big dreams is to host punk records on a global scale so that all of humanity could share one brain and upload all of its information and accordingly also download 
all sorts of information. A sort of internet, if you will. But according to Vegapunk's dialogue, the creation of a global punk records still seemed like a project not yet completed, meaning that it wouldn't be ready to unveil to the world unless Vegapunk was just declaring the possibility of such a worldwide brain, hoping to pick up some interest so that his will carries on. But I don't see this being very likely or even a very exciting idea to warrant this sort of cliffhanger or really all that important to the rest of the world if it's not something that they can immediately access. And also, and maybe more relevantly, creating the internet doesn't really relate to the truth of the world. Which is what Vegapunk said his announcement is about in chapter 1108. Some secret that relates to the truth of the world. Unless Vegapunk figured out that having an internet is something that is already possible, or at least was possible. For example, in the ancient kingdom, but it's another one of the things that the world government has kept hidden from the world, in which case then I guess it does relate to the world's truth and secrets. But let's consider something we do know for sure to be true and a secret worth sharing. The true technological capabilities of the ancient kingdom. The fact that the ancient kingdom was actually a very technologically advanced society is in my opinion one of the greatest reveals we've seen throughout the whole Egghead Island arc. Which is a crazy statement I know because we've had some crazy reveals in this arc, some great lore drops like the Nefertari family being a part of the D clan, all the names of the Gorosei, a glimpse at the Gorosei and even Emu's powers and so on and so forth. But I still think that the reveal that the ancient kingdom was actually a super advanced tech kingdom with very high technical capabilities was probably the biggest and greatest lore drop for me at least because it really recontextualized how we understand the ancient kingdom and the whole world since the void century. This reveal completely flipped One Piece on its head. When I first read that chapter, I thought I was experiencing that mind exploding meme. Similar to the shock that I felt when I found out the truth about the Eldians and the Paradise Island during Attack on Titan. And if you know, you know. Now I will admit that I might personally feel more attached to this reveal about the ancient kingdom because it also somewhat verified a lot of points that I made in a Laputa video of mine. And oops, I said the naughty L word, so I'm preparing myself for no less than 10 giggly comments about what Laputa means in Spanish. What? But that is actually the title of the Ghibli film that Oda seems to have been heavily inspired by. A film that could also give us hints and clues about reveals to come in the future. So if you haven't watched that video yet, I would highly recommend you to do so after watching this one. But even putting that aside, I think there is a good chance that this is the reveal that Vegapunk wants to make because this is one of the only big earth shattering types of news that we know for sure Vegapunk knows and knew even before the conflict to have started so that he could have recorded this message in advance. It also relates to some other possible reveals, for example the creation of an eternal energy source. We know that similar to his dreams of creating an internet, that creating a free energy source for everyone to access is one of Vegapunk's dreams. And that this is also linked to the ancient kingdom's technology and technical capabilities because the ancient kingdom managed a powerful and dynamic energy that was able to power the iron giant. Which is interesting because then this also goes back to the birth of the sun god Nika or rebirth of the sun god Nika because it seems like Luffy's use of gear fifth has some sort of correlation with the iron giant waking up. And of course correlation doesn't necessarily mean causation but that's only in real life science. Here in the world of manga, unless Oda is dangling Luffy's use of his gear fifth form at the same time the iron giant is powering up as a red herring, this is the most obvious and most likely cause of the iron giant finally awaking after centuries. Suggesting then that Luffy's gear fifth and the Nika devil fruit is also likely to be able to emit some sort of great energy output, not to mention the sun theme of the sun god Nika, which we all have to agree seems to relate to the idea of a flame or undying fire which is the term that Lilith uses to talk about the eternal energy source. But the caveat here is that it doesn't seem like Vegapunk is aware of the Iron Giant being awake yet, meaning that he might not have put two and two together about Luffy's sun god status being significant to his lifelong dream of creating a forever power source. And in any case, I don't actually think that Vegapunk's big announcement is going to be about the free energy source 
exactly because as far as we know he hasn't been able to create that or figure that energy source out yet. But he did say in chapter 1068 that as he dug deeper into the ancient energy source he began to uncover other secrets about the past but we were interrupted by the CP0 before he could delve into what those discoveries were. Which has me wondering that whatever the news that Vegapunk wants to share is, it might not be as straightforward as the Ancient Kingdom's technology or the energy source, but it will be somehow related to the technical capability and digging deeper, the nature or the source of the Ancient Kingdom's knowledge and power. But seeing as that's quite vague, let's move on to the next possibility, the existence of Imu. I've seen this idea floating around now and I'm just going to discuss it quickly. It's definitely not impossible, but at the same time, there's no evidence that Vegapunk himself is aware of the fact that Imu exists. There is a chance that Vegapunk might have figured this out while conducting his studies. For example, we know that he had access to all of the O'Haran Scholar's books, so might have been able to come across something that pointed to Imu's existence, but there is also nothing to suggest that the archaeologists of O'Hara were aware of this fact either. Which again, isn't to say that this means Vegapunk being aware of Imu is impossible, but I guess I'm just saying that there's not enough of a basis for me to comment on. However, I do think a more substantive argument would be the truth about the ancient weapons and how they were used by the ancient kingdom or how they've come to be used by the world government since the void century, or something about the mother flame because this is something we know Vegapunk has direct relationship to. And revealing the existence of a massive weapon like the mother flame and its control by the world government is indeed a huge secret that I'm sure would shock the world. And something that Vegapunk thinks is in the interest of the world to know. Especially after experiencing events like the Lulucia disappearance that I mentioned earlier, this existence of the Mother Flame and perhaps how it's supposed to counter the ancient weapons, especially if Vegapunk managed to uncover some secrets about the ancient weapons during his research, I think that's a much more plausible announcement. But the idea that I personally like the most, and it seems like I'm not alone here, what I would really love to see is that Vegapunk's big announcement will be the true name of the Ancient Kingdom. We now know that Vegapunk and Professor Clover were acquainted, perhaps we could even call them friends or respected contemporaries. And in chapter 1066, we were also told that Saul and the Elbuff Giants were able to save all the books of the O'Haran Scholars, which Shaka then read, saving them into his brain allowing the Vegapunks to continue researching the knowledge that the O'Haran scholars uncovered. In which case, this pretty much confirms that Vegapunk then also knows the true name of the Ancient Kingdom because this is the great reveal that Clover died trying to share with the world. So there is really a solid chance that Vegapunk's news will be the true name of the Ancient Kingdom and I really like this idea because it would really just be a nice case of the story come full circle. The first Buster Call we ever witnessed ended with the death of Professor Clover and with him our hopes of ever uncovering the truth of the Void Century and the name of the Ancient Kingdom unless we got to Laugh Tale. But here, decades later in another Buster Call, where I have to say this time the Marines are having a much much harder time, the secret name that the world government tried to snuff out and hide from the rest of the world will finally be liberated, Vegapunk fulfilled the work of another great esteemed academic while sticking a major FU into the face of the world government in his final moments. Now that's poetic justice. But like I said, that's just my favorite possibility. There are obviously merits to all the ideas that I've discussed in this video and I'm sure there are loads more other possibilities. So let me know what you think is the most likely announcement that Vegapunk is going to make by leaving a comment below if there's something I have discussed make sure to let me know if you've enjoyed the discussion then please do subscribe it would mean the world to me and vegapunk like i said it's his dying wish so you have to fulfill it but in all seriousness thank you so much for listening to another one of my ramblings thank you to all of our patreon and channel members for all your continued support this is joy girl and i'll see you again soon